Um, the only thing Bitcoiners really have to do with their money is use centralized exchanges, and we've seen how that goes. So um, instead of you know leaving their money sitting around at home or getting wrecked in FTX or margining somewhere, uh, we're trying to offer Bitcoiners another option, which is to bring their Bitcoin in a decentralized, robust way um, to Ethereum and really any chain so that they can use it to trade, sure, but also so they can use it for collateral, um, to take loans against, to stake, to earn yield. Um, so yeah, that's, that's TBTC. This is the second version of TBTC. So in the first one, we built something really robust and it's been on the market for, uh, gosh, since 2020 and hasn't been, hasn't had any issues to run well, but, um, but it was hard to use. And I think that's why people prefer to run BTC and WBTC. It's just very hard to use TBTC v1. So what we've done in v2 is we've made some changes that are really focused on, okay, how can we be robust and easier to use? So uh, if you're minting, it's simple. You um, go to dashboard.threshold.network slash TBTC, and um, you have a Bitcoin wallet, and you say you want to do a deposit, and it gives you a QR code. And um, that QR code, if you know Bitcoin, it, it has actually generated a new address using Bitcoin script. Um, and there's a lot to say about how that works, but you deposit your Bitcoin. And then once it's got a few um, confirmations, you then reveal it on the Ethereum chain. So you say, hey guys, I deposited. And at that point, all you have to do is wait. So one transaction on Bitcoin, one transaction on Ethereum. And then you wait. Right now it takes about three hours. We're working on getting that down to close to 30 minutes um, through a process called optimistic minting. And then at the end, uh, you have TBTC on Ethereum. So our team will work to make that faster and faster, but right now it's uh, it's robust and, and uh, you don't need to ask anyone permission to deposit. I think probably the best way to think about TBTC is decentralized WBTC. Um, there's obviously a lot of nuance and I can talk about all the technical differences, but at the end of the day, you have this huge Bitcoin bridge, which is KYC and, and, uh, and, and kind of fragile, which is WBTC. Um, and they've done a great job getting us where we are, but it's, it's, I think it's time after FTX to make sure that we get people's Bitcoin out of WBTC as well. Um, another, I guess a couple other points to compare to might be something like uh, RIN BTC. So uh, RIN was the runner up behind WBTC for years. Um, I think the difference between TBTC and RIN BTC is we're actually doing what we're saying we're doing. A lot of people like to posture and say something is decentralized, but then they don't tell you what they mean. So what we mean is actually, who cares if what we're doing is decentralized? What we wanna be is censorship resistant. No one should be able to keep your Bitcoin from you. Um, you should say where it goes and how it's used. Um, it shouldn't be seizable or there shouldn't be like a liquidation, it shouldn't be stolen. And as we just saw with RIN BTC, um, you know, when FTX and Alameda went bankrupt, uh, the RIN BTC network is now at risk and they're asking uh, users to remove funds before, before the bridge shuts down. So, you know, a censorship resistant decentralized bridge, it shouldn't matter what happens in a bankruptcy court, that shouldn't impact a proper bridge. So I think that's the biggest difference um, between TBTC and competitors is um, we're trying to build something that's robust even against um, courts and, and uh, different regimes in different countries. Yeah, so the most important part is custody. So when people talk about bridges between all these different chains, if you want, there's often a way to do something that's trust minimized and kind of like perfect. Now, most of these bridges aren't perfect, as you see from the news. It's very complicated software to write. But a Bitcoin bridge is different because there can be no perfect bridge. Um, the way that Bitcoin works, it was the first blockchain ever invented, right? And so it doesn't have tools to uh, read Ethereum, like Ethereum can read Bitcoin. It doesn't have tools to make sure that you can build a bridge. So we have to work around that. So the most important component of TBDC v2 is decentralized Bitcoin custody. And so every time you deposit Bitcoin in TBTC v2 to go over the bridge, you're depositing into a 51 of 100 randomly selected wallet from stakers in the threshold network. Um, and the idea is that, uh, you know, it would take a majority of them to do something malicious. Um, as the system bootstraps, we'll slowly increase that number. Eventually it'll take 60 or 65% uh, of the network to actually do something malicious. So um, that's the most important, I think, component, right? Because if someone messes with your TBTC, um, okay, like we built it so that that's incredibly difficult, but the most important thing is that Bitcoin you first put in, you wanna be confident that you can get it back out. And uh, that's, so that's what we built.
Yeah, so TBTC is built on Threshold Network. And um, the Threshold Network is called that because it's a threshold cryptography network. So what that means is things that you could usually only do with one key or on one device, you can actually do threshold, which is that you can do it across many devices. And you can say maybe, um, you know, a hunt, there can be 100 key shares and only 50 or 60 or 70 of them are needed to do a particular activity. Um, so Threshold Network came from two really strong projects, Keep Network, which is where I came from, and then New Cipher. Um, and both these projects were working on uh, different applications of the same idea. How can we take things that people have said for years have to be centralized and how can we make sure they're not? So that's what Threshold does. Um, and so its relationship to TBTC is it is the infrastructure that powers TBTC. TBTC is a thin layer of interface on top of uh, what the stakers and the Threshold network actually provide on the custody side. Um, the other thing that's really exciting about Threshold uh, as a network and as a DAO is it means that TBTC has support to, um, you know, there's an entire DAO that's working on things like integrations and marketing. Um, you know, I run a development company, New Cypher is a development company. We can't be everything. And uh, having a, a community that's excited about um, self-sovereign technology that can actually market these things and move it forward and grow it is, is also a huge boon for TBTC. So now that TBTC is live, um, we have a ton of things that I'm excited about coming up. Um, and it's our job to, to like keep it tight and not get, uh, not lose focus. So the first is, okay, TBTC exists, cool. Now we need to make sure that Bitcoin is everywhere. Um, so for us, that's gonna mean launching on Optimism and Arbitrum and Polygon, but then it's gonna mean launching on Solana and Aptos and Sui and Phantom and every, every chain uh, where there is DeFi, but there is not Bitcoin. With RIN BTC and FTX dying, there's this huge opportunity, like Sol BTC went to zero. So there's not a BTC on Solana anymore. Um, and so what we can do is we can take this relationship between Bitcoin and Ethereum and suddenly we can make it okay. It's relationship between Bitcoin and Ethereum, that's how you meant, but you can get your Bitcoin anywhere. So that's really gonna be our next big push. After that, things are gonna get uh, weird. Um, a guy named Casey recently launched a project called Ordinals on Bitcoin. And the market has sort of rediscovered NFTs on BTC. So this has existed for years. So like if you've ever seen a rare Pepe, that was originally a Bitcoin NFT. Um, so the earliest one I've seen, I think was 2014. Um, but people have claimed that they've had NFTs on Bitcoin since 2011. But now there's all this new interest in like, okay, well, Bitcoin is the original chain. How can we get the original NFTs? And so you're seeing like ordinals, people are trying to buy and sell and trade. It's quite difficult to do that on just Bitcoin. Um, so we're gonna bridge all that over. We've already got the tech, TBTC exists, so why not bring people's NFTs over as well? So they can use things like OpenSea, et cetera. So really stoked about, uh, really just like getting creative and, and helping merge the Bitcoin and Ethereum ethos a little bit around NFTs. I really want it to be easy for any Bitcoiner to come over to Ethereum and start earning yield that's native to Bitcoin, right? So, um, there are a lot of things to talk about there, but one of the projects at the DAO that's the most interesting is called THUSD. So THUSD is this um, attempt at, a, and I say attempt because stable coins are hard, but it's an attempt at a decentralized stable coin. Uh, and I'm not an expert on stable coins, but what it looks like is a really robust design based off liquidity. And so unlike other stable coins that, gosh, some of them are bringing in like real estate and, and all sorts of things and, and have all of these ways to be easily censored, um, the idea of THUSD is you can just use uh, ETH or BTC to collateralize your THUSD, that's it. And by limiting that collateral, you can actually be really confident um, both in the peg and also in the censorship resistance of, of the, uh, the stablecoin. So um, it's not like my area of expertise, but I am really excited to see that Bitcoiners will be able to come over to Ethereum and then just immediately get USD against their Bitcoin. They can farm with it, they can pay expenses, whatever and they don't have to worry about like a terrible tax event. Uh, they don't have to worry that they're not long Bitcoin anymore. Um, so I think for a lot of hodlers like me, it's just nice to give us that power and not say, well, you have to sell your Bitcoin or do anything interesting. Yeah, so please join us. I would love to see more people uh, using their Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can go to tbtc.network and uh, use any Bitcoin wallet, any Ethereum wallet. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any issues, just hit us up on Discord at uh, discord.gg slash threshold.